this is pedal i i'm hoping that my um intro didn't just fail there <laughs> and just kind of stopped on my end and then i just popped up so anyways hopefully it worked well on your end but either way welcome to facts and two cents uh, again this is pedal i uh, hope you or have you know have had a great week hope you're having a great day so far um you know i'm kind of film or recording this really um you know friday night and so <laughs> i was hoping to do a live today but i couldn't do it my schedule had been a little bit weird and so but i am grateful that i can at least do a video so anyways what do we have again um you know just to, you know to remind you we are a channel that support the duke and duchess of sussex um harry megan archie baby lily mama doria pool guy the chickens all of us here at sussex squad welcome 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 um so yes what has been going on in royal world well actually quite a few things actually but you know even though a few things have been going on our faves have been relatively quiet you know not relatively they have actually been really quiet we haven't heard from them at all you know at least nothing that's you know happening now they have been very 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 quiet and again it's been driving the british press crazy which i love anything that drives them crazy i love because i'm petty that way so <laughs> Oh yeah, we're petty and we're biased here as well, just in case you didn't know this. Um, but anyways, yes. So they have, we have not heard a word from them and all the narratives that the British press, they've, you know, you know, they have tons of headlines from um, Harry and Meghan headlines that I just kind of sit in there because Harry and Meghan have been quiet. They have not said a word. And so now it's, you know, they were begging them to say something. Now they're like, you know, the palace is frustrated because they, you know, they are like, will they, won't they, will they, won't they? And I'm like, the only people that are doing will they, won't they is you. Because Harry and Meghan have been quiet. All you had to do was be patient. They'll let you know when they let you know. You're the one that ran ahead of the, or, you know, in publishing will they, won't they articles. And now you've run out of things to will they, won't they about. And so now they are frustrated. <laughs> And again, I'm very happy about that. You know, I'm like, you stay frustrated. <laughs> While our faves are doing whatever they're doing under a tree in Montecito. So then you just continue doing that, my loves, you know, and let them stay frustrated across the pond. So, but apart from them being frustrated, a wonderful thing popped up today. Um, you know, Harry just bonding with a fellow vet. It's just, there's nothing better than that. I mean, it is just, it's so heartwarming. It's so wonderful. It's just so just, it does your heart good when you see it because Harry is so good with them his fellow vets they are just you know they appreciate him he appreciates them and he just really he just packs on the love for them you know and so i'm gonna move my banner so i can read everything but if you're new here and you haven't subscribed go ahead and subscribe and hit the quick click the notification bell so that you know when we drop a video um and you know please like and share this video help us to build the platform and if you're able join the channel um definitely join the two cents crew but um so again this popped up today out of the blue and it was like oh it was one of one of those wonderful surprises with harry bonding with his vets and so the evening standard and then a whole bunch of different um you know outlets picked it up um later on in the day i'm also going to just move my little banner there there you go banner or yeah my logo i should say um but anyway so this is what happened the duke of sussex uh congratulated a disabled veteran um saying he is the definition of inspiration and a and fully deserved his improved vehicle during a surprise appearance on car sos and apparently car sos is a show never heard of it it's on national geographic and um they i think his family took in his car into you know to do this repair and uh or renovation whatever and they ended up on a tv show and <laughs> and i think the whole thing was a bit of a surprise for him and so <laughs> he is and he's just so grateful and just you know such a wonderful surprise it was on thursday an episode of national geographics car renovation show saw a former lance corporal stephen vanden 
the Van Nierkirk, 36, have his Jeep Grand Cherokee taken in for a persistent mechanical problem. And so part of that, um, you know, um, so he took that in and it became, a, you know, it's a show. And then part of that is um, Prince Harry um, recorded this message to him and um, as part of the show. Um, and I guess the gentleman who handed to him, he seemed to be also um, a member of the military. And so he handed the, the phone to him and you see Harry in the bottom. And so that's Stephen watching Harry's message on the phone. And it says, so part of what Harry, is, you know, Harry said a long, a long message to him, but this is part of it. And the link is in the show notes so you could read the whole of it. But this is part of it. It says, after getting injured at such a young age, um, and after two tours, I think he got injured. He was like 20 something uh, when he got injured. Um, it says, after getting injured at such a young age, after two tours in, of Afghanistan, you are the definition of, uh, uh, definition of inspiration because you are not defined by your injury. You are defined by your selflessness to other to your community, to your inspiration talks, your inspirational talks to young people. And of course, to your four kids and your amazing wife, Sadie, who no doubt got you this far. So full respect, well done. And I heard someone told me that you're planning a bicycle, um, which is a bicycle trip from Canada to Mexico. Just a mere 2,745 miles, I think. Good luck with that. You are going to do it. You're going to smash it. I know you're going to raise a lot of money for Blesma, which is an organization, I think, for people who lose limbs. And he lost his leg. He lost one of his legs, actually, um, in, you know, when he got injured in Afghanistan. Um, and it says, other than that, mate, just a huge congratulations and thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your continued service and commitment to others. And, um, you know, part of the, what Harry told him is like, you know, he looked forward after, at the end when he's completed his um, his bike ride because he's also going to be raising money for the organization Blesma. Um, you know, at the end of it, Harry said, you know, either in person or in Zoom, you'd love to meet him. And so, um, you know, and the, you know, the episode... Car SOS that's airing on National Geographic is gonna re-air. It's gonna there's gonna be a repeat of it on the 26th at 7 p.m. So that might be in the UK or it might just be um, you know check your local and see if if you want to watch it check your local um, channels for National Geographic and see if you can watch it there. But um, the video with Harry's part of it is definitely online. And I'm going to put a link actually in this article, the link to this, you'll also see the video, um, Harry speaking to him. And it's just, I just thought it was just so fantastic. And just so I'm like, oh, it just does the heart good, man. Just Harry with his fellow veterans is just so amazing. And so people got um, spoke to him. People, it seems like people is all over anything Harry and Meghan, man. They just jump right in. And so people spoke to him. And so this is what his, uh, his reaction is to what he saw. It says, veteran reacts to Prince Harry's personal message on Car SOS. Again, I have never heard of Car SOS before. <laughs> Um, he has done so much. Um, what he said, Lance Corporal Stephen um, Van Nieker, a father who lost his leg in Afghanistan, tells people, getting a surprise message from the Duke of Sussex made my sacrifice and effort feel appreciated. And that's how Harry makes people feel like loved and appreciated. And, you know, and he goes on to say, and this is a little part of what he says again, this article is going to be in the show notes, so you can read the whole of it. Um, so it says, for him to take, if he uh, Stephen is talking about Harry, uh, for him to take the time to get to know my story and to send that message saying all those kind words and wishing me well for my future challenge was a huge honor, Van Niekerk added. To hear appreciation from those around me is humbling, but to hear it from a royal who also is a fellow veteran was so was very special. Also, um, 
also as this is all coming from someone who also been through a lot and it wasn't just some generic message. It felt very personal and show the mark of a man he really is. It made my sacrifice and effort feel appreciated. And I just like, that's, you know, that's it. When people say, you know, they talk about Harry and just the kind of person he is, it's like, he makes you feel like you're the only person in the room, even though, you know, he meets so many people and knows so many people and gives so many people. He, he just he makes it so personal for every single person. And so I just really so happy for him, uh, for Stephen, that he's able to get that and be able to feel appreciated because we know how some in the UK, especially the press, treat their veterans and some in the royals, how they treat veterans. So um, it just really, um, it was just really, really a wonderful, wonderful surprise for him and also surprise for us. We didn't know. And apparently this was, you know, Harry, at least Harry's part of it was taped last year. So I don't know when last year, maybe late last year. I don't know. Um, you know, but apparently it was filmed or Harry filmed himself last year. And so, um, and it's just airing now. So, but all in all, it's just wonderful. So hopefully I'll be able to catch this show, uh, Car SOS. I, I'm not into car and I don't speak cars, but I just like to see, you know, just to get the overall of um, what, you know, his experience and also um, his experience getting his car as a veteran, get you know, getting his car redone and all of that. And then, you know, I'd love to see the other people around me, especially the man who spoke to him because he was like, you know, this is for you. And he was giving him, you know, the phone and, and, and you know, he, he almost couldn't believe that Harry was, you know, really specifically was speaking to him. And so the gentleman was like, yeah, no, that's for you. He's talking to you, <laughs> you know, and, and Stephen was so, he's so humble and so grateful. It was just like, it just really warms your heart. So kudos to him and, you know, good luck on his uh, bike tour. That is long, you know, again, he's uh, going to be doing it with, without, you know, Again, he's lost the legs. He's going to be doing it with a prosthetic leg. And so, yeah, I'm telling you, Invictus, I mean, I don't actually even know if he's, if he's a part of Invictus, to tell you the truth. It doesn't say. Um, but it's just it's just seeing veterans do the things they do. I mean, after all that they've gone through and all the struggles, it is a, it's an amazing, amazing thing. So kudos to Stephen. And again, the link is in the show notes. You can read all about it. What else is happening? Spare, <laughs> the little book that could. Spare is still number one, 10 weeks straight in Toronto. Oh, I forgot to pull in the one from um, the UK. It's also number one in the UK still, you know, 10 weeks. And it has now dropped to number two in the US at the New York Times. It's now dropped to number two, both um, the e-print and e-book and hard, cop um, hard copy. So hardcover, I should say. So a couple of weeks ago when I had missed it, um, that governor in Florida, his book was number one for one week. Then Harry jumped over it again last week and it was number one. And so this week, this time, Harry, um, this book saved, has now jumped over Harry and is number one in Harry's uh, and Spare and Spare is now number two. So we'll see if this book is able to have any staying power because again, that governor from Florida's book, actually it's not even uh, in the top three anymore. <laughs> it went away. So um, we will see. We'll see if... Um, if saved is able to stay there or if harry's book spare will leapfrog it again and go into number one again and there is paris hilton's book paris's book um is number three right behind prince harry and apparently she did an interview recently where she's talking about really um appreciating harry and you know she really likes the royal family i guess or she really likes harry i think she also likes william so i don't think she either way it doesn't yeah um but her book is number three so and thank you rs Locke, who um you know this is her this is her um screenshot that i'm using so i wanted to give credit to her for sharing that on twitter thank you rs lock and so um let's see what else is happening so spare is you know it's going doing its thing next week i'm sure it probably is going to leapfrog and go back to number one 
hopefully. <laughs> but it's also number one in the UK and other places. And I just found out today that it's going to be translated in Turkish. Um, a few weeks ago, um, we um, I pulled in that... Um, Megan's books, uh, ben, The Bench, was being translated in Turkish. And so uh, now Harry's number one book, Times Bestseller, is also going to be uh, translated. You know, so that'll make it like, I think, 17 countries because it was originally it was 16 countries that it was being translated. Now let's add Turkey in there and it's going to be translated in Turkish as well. So there you go. You know, Spare is doing this thing. It is doing its thing 10 weeks, 11 weeks later. So there you go. What else is happening? Oh, this is so cute. I saw this and I was like, oh, oh no. I, I don't know why this is. Sometimes this just, um, when I pull things in, it just becomes a mess. <laughs> but anyways, um, what it meant to say over there that all the things just sort of <laughs> become one big jumbled mess is from Ham and High. It's, I guess that's a uh, magazine that I never heard of. But Harry and Meghan's, and they spell Meghan's last names wrong, but Harry and Meghan's wedding cake baker, Claire Tack. Um, releases a recipe book. And so this is a book about cakes and pastries and stuff. So I just thought it was so cute. And I was like, love is a pink cake. <laughs> and a lot of it, she talks about, you know, um, there's a whole article, which I'm going to put in the show notes so you can read the whole article, where she talks about, you know, baking and how baking is about love. Because when you're baking, you're baking for someone you love or some, you know, or something you love, like, you know, I don't know, a wedding or, a, you know, birthday or whatever, always about love when you're baking. And so um, her book is called Love is a Pink Cake. And so <laughs> by Claire Dack. And um, a little bit about the article, it says the royals, Harry and Meghan, because that's their wedding cake you can see at the top right there. Uh, the royals sweetly refer to Violet Bakery as a London-based culinary gem set her lemon cake, her lemon elderflower cake, decorated with um, flowers incorporated and bright flowers of the spring. That's Megan's cake, Megan and Harry's cake. The couple also asked Patak to make their daughter Lilibet's first birthday cake, a version of the wedding cake, iced with pink strawberry buttercream. Anyone wanting to try a slice is welcome on April 6th launch party of the tax fifth book, Love is a Pink Cake, Vintage Publishing. Vintage Publishing is her um, publisher, where she will serve up bubbles and bakes from 75 recipes. So if you're in London or East London, definitely go by there and, um, you know, get some of her cake and, uh, you know, chill with her. Maybe she'll have a version of Lilibet's cake and a version of, um, you know, of Harry and Meghan's wedding cake there. So you can grab a slice. So, but I just thought it was just so cute. And I was like, oh, very cool. I mean, I wish, I mean, I can't eat any of that stuff, but I was just like, oh, it'd be great to taste it. Then I'll get sick after, but <laughs> I will taste Megan and Lily Ben's cake. I'm not in London, so that's a mute point. It's just my imagination. <laughs> but anyway, the article is going to be in the show notes. Take a read um, if you would like. What else is happening? Oh, <laughs> not that this is funny. It's just a major change from that wonderful news of cake. We go to... Friends and the royals who were supposed to be there. You know, yesterday we talked about we talked about the fact that this may not happen. You know, because France, as we know, if you've been paying attention to the news, France is you know people are protesting. They are protesting their government. Um, uh, you know, changing the um, you know their pension. You know, the the age where you can collect your pension uh, from sixty two to sixty four. So uh, people are not happy. Unions are not happy, and they are just. I mean, they are just going all out protesting this. And Macron is like, well, I'm not backing down. You can protest, but I'm not backing down. And the people are making their voices heard. You know, 
Hundreds of thousands are out there protesting, burning things. I mean, it is incredible what's been happening. So yesterday we were like, uh, you know, they're like, no, we don't want you to come. Stay home. Basically, the protest was like, no, we don't want you to come. You know, um, even the people who, as we talked about yesterday, even the, the company that you know, provides the literal red carpet that the royals would be walking on. They're like, uh-uh, we are not working. We are striking. We are not supplying you with flags and we're not supplying you with any kind, any furnishings and we're not supplying you with a red carpet. We are not doing it. And so Emmanuel and McCarran's government, they're like, oh, well, we'll use scabs or, you know, people who are not protesting, who are not striking. They will be the ones to do it, in a, you know, and like, yeah, right. But um, so that was where they were yesterday, even while protesters were like, no, stay home, stay away. Um, this is not the time. It's completely inappropriate. You know, people are out here literally fighting for their lives and livelihood. This is not the time to be going and, you know, having, you know, pump and circumstance in in France while people are there protesting. It's completely, um, you know, inappropriate. That, But yesterday, Macron was still like, no, 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 we'll do it. We'll just move the location and we'll have other people do the red carpet and all of that stuff. And so today, you know, <laughs> we got the King Charles postponed trips to France amid unrest. Uh, for President Emmanuel Macron, who has been the target of widespread fury and protests after he pushed through an increase in the retirement age, a planned royal visit was particularly in-timed. Ill-timed, sorry. King Charles III, and this is just an article, uh, another clip from the article, King Charles III of Britain has been postponed a visit to France that was scheduled for next week because of strike and protest against President Emmanuel Macron's pension overhaul. Officials in both countries said on Friday an embarrassing blow to the French leader. The visit by King Charles and Queen Consort Camilla, who were scheduled to arrive in Paris on Sunday before heading to Germany on Wednesday, was particularly in time for Macron in light of the widespread fury over his plan to raise the legal retirement age um, to 64 from 62. So... Yeah, it is, you know, it was just completely ill-timed. And, you know, the moment they know that this was happening, this should have been canceled. But no, 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 they're like, no, 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 we'll just, you know, we'll just work around it. It's a little protest. We'll work around it. We'll just have it. And then, I mean, I think that just really antagonized people more. They just really came out. And so one of the reasons it, you know, that really drove them to cancel this because maybe if this didn't happen, they will still try to figure out ways to make this trip happen. But when they did that yesterday, they were like, oh, you know, we'll just have other people do the red carpet. You know, since the other those that are striking are not going to do it, we'll just have other people do it. We'll work around it and all of that stuff. Well, what happened? French unions call new strikes during King Charles's visit. So the unions decide, okay, we're going to target this visit. We're going to target this visit of King Charles and we're going to call new strikes. So French trade union have called for a new day of nation, nationwide strikes and protests next Tuesday, which will coincide with the scheduled visit by Britain's King Charles III to the country. The new date of March 28th was announced Thursday in a joint statement by trade union organiz organizations, which blamed the government for the explosive situation in the country and urged workers to continue protesting against Emmanuel Macron's pension reform. So, you know, the strikers and the, the unions are like, uh-uh, you're not going to be, you know, you're not going to ignore us and pretend we're not here and go about business as usual and do your pump and circumstance with a king. Uh-uh, <laughs> be like, you know, yes, we know you're, you're protesting, but, you know, go eat cake or something. I'm over here with a king right now, you know, and the unions are like, uh-uh, we are going to call a protest in the middle and we're going to target, specifically target this time so that more people will come out and protest them. And so, you know, when this happened, all bets were off and it was just like, okay, maybe this is not a good idea. Let's just cancel this, you know? So they called it off. There's a little bit of going back and forth as to, you know, 
you know, I think Macron was saying, oh, it was something that was mutually, you know, it was mutual. And then others were saying, no, 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 it's Macron who, who called it off, you know, whatever. It's called off. There's not going to be a trip to France. They're saying, you know, they'll, you know, hopefully they'll do it at a later date, whatever. But it's just very interesting. Um, and yes, you know, I mean, this is what we <laughs> talk about protesting. I mean, this is what France looks like. I mean, it is everybody and their mother, brother, sister, uncle, kids are on the street protesting. Millions of people are out there protesting, burning things. I mean, look at this. It is unbelievable what is happening, you know, and the French people, are they are not sick of France. They are like, uh-uh, we don't care who in there. If you, we don't like what you're doing, we're going to get out under the streets and we're going to protest. And it's kind of what in my mind I kind of imagined, you know, I'm not here for fire. Fire scare me. So I'm like not here for burning things. That just terrifies me. But I am here for people on the street protesting loudly, letting their voices be heard. Like a couple of weeks I saw in the UK where, you know, the majority of the press ignored. People are not ignoring this, you know. And so this is what I imagine an anti-monarch protest to be like. This is what I'd love to see on that coronation day. People are letting their voices know. This is not acceptable because, again, they are spending close over, you know, and this is kind of what the number is, either close to or over 100 million pounds to do this coronation. Nobody asked for, you know, this is what I'd like to see. You know, people saying, no, this is unacceptable that you're going to do this in a cost of living crisis. But, yeah, this is France. This is, I mean, it is unbelievable sight seeing what the, when people, when they are upset, uh-uh, when they are not, do not agree, they're not going to stay home and just take it. They are getting out on the street and get their voices heard. So it's incredible to the people of France. And hopefully, you know, as they stay out there as long as they want until this is overturned or reversed or, you know, Macron somehow comes to his sentence. He's like, he's like, you know, in, in a lot of ways, it's kind of like trying to be like baby dictator or something. It's like you push through this thing without a vote, nothing, just because it's what you wanted to do. And it's like the people had no no choice but to accept it. That's dictator behavior. So anyway, so that's what's going on in France. And yesterday, <laughs> yesterday we talked about, you know, you know, in, in, in Paris, there were all these protests, but out there, I think, guess in the country, whatever wine country, Bordeaux, they're like, oh, no, 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 no. That's in Paris. The protests in Paris, that's political. Paris is about politics. We're about wine. And so we talked about this on the episode yesterday. This is where they were. And this is a little bit about what they said yesterday. Charles does not command, um, Charles does command some respect in France for his environmental activism. The king and queen consort plan to tour areas of France, Bordeaux's re France's Bordeaux region, which last year were ravaged by wildfires, widely blamed on global warming. Regional officials are effusive about receiving the UK royals, a stark contrast to the reception Charles and Camilla could have, could expect in Paris uh, or Paris. It's very touching that Charles planned to come to Bordeaux. We have a strong relationship and historic um, with the UK. The region stayed the region stayed English for three centuries. It's in our DNA, says Cecile Ha of the Bordeaux Wine Council. In Paris, they do politics, but here in Bordeaux, we like Charles. <laughs> <laughs> because we share the same strong commitment to sustainability. So they're like, yeah, 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 those protests are all in Paris. You know, we are about, we are about wine and we're about the English and we love Charles. This was yesterday. This is <laughs> on your right is to, you know, today, earlier today. Bordeaux City Hall set a <laughs> Bordeaux City Hall set on fire amid nationwide protests against pension changes. Large and peaceful protests were marred by outbreaks of violence as union claimed 3.5 million turnout while the authorities put the number at just over a million. Whatever, million, um, you know, there are at least a million people 
out there protesting. And part of that protest, they burned, they set fire. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh. They set fire to the Bordeaux City Hall. And now I don't know if the whole building burnt down. I don't know. I For some reason, I don't have that information. I didn't see if it burned down. But the front of it was burning. And this is what... And it's just like, oh my goodness. You know, yesterday they were all like, oh no, 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 that sort of thing is, it's only in Paris and all, you know, protesters are like, oh no, it's in Bordeaux as well. We feel the same way in Bordeaux. And so Bordeaux, they went off and set the city hall on fire. And so, yep, that's what it is on the right. So very interesting. All of this, you know, and all of this is happening then, you know, the royals had no choice. I mean, what do they do? You know, they can't go to Paris because, you know, if they go there, protesters will be out in mass. And now they were like, okay, well, we'll go to Bordeaux and, you know, figure out wine and, you know, and environmental stuff. And then the Bordeaux City Hall is on fire. And it's just like, oh, okay, we got to cancel this, you know. So very, very interesting stuff going on in France, um, you know. Again, um, I haven't heard of anyone, you know, dying, or which is good. I mean, I at least I haven't heard. I hope nobody has died in all of this. I mean, I want people to be able to protest and protest safely so that no, there are no deaths or anything, but that they get their voices heard loud and clear and that this changes and they get what they want. So kudos for the people of France. Um, uh, let's see, what else is happening? Oh, <laughs> this. I saw this and I had to laugh. BBC coverage of Queen's State Funeral recognized at BAFTA TV nominations. That's right, BAFTA. They had their films, um, you know, earlier in the, in the year, and now they're doing the BAFTA TV nominations. And the coverage was tapped for its technical directing and sound work. So they have three different, um, they're nominated in three different categories. It says BBC has been recognized in BAFTA Television Craft nomination for its coverage of the Queen's Funeral and Platinum Jubilee celebrations. The broadcaster coverage of the state funeral, including the service from Westminster Abbey and procession of the coffin through London, featured commentary from presenters including Hugh Edwards, Kirsty Young, and David Dimbleby, who came out of retirement for the event. It is its production team is nominated in the live event category, while the directing team is recognized in the director multi-camera category. Those working in sound from the event were also tapped in the sound, in the sound factual list. And so, um, so BBC is all excited. They got a BAFTAs. And so it's very funny that, you know, so the Queen's funeral and her Jubilee, you know, was the one that they were covering that got nominated. And so when I saw that, I had to laugh because, you know, we all remember in 2021, <laughs> top right. Earthshot Prize 2021 takes home BAFTA for a live event. That's right. BAFTA tweeting out that Earthshot Prize won a BAFTA. And there's a picture of Prince William right there <laughs> with his Earthshot Prize. And if you didn't and you're new here and you didn't realize it, as you look at the bottom where it says IndieWire, who is the president of BAFTA? All right, Prince William. <laughs> Prince William is the president of BAFTA. So Pri Prince William made sure, I guess, made sure that, he, you know, the Queen's funeral and the Jubilee, you know, that BBC, they, you know, they were the one that covered it. They were their main outlet that covered it. And I guess other people got from BBC. And so they made sure that, you know, that they got rewarded for the Jubilee and the funeral. And again, of course, we remember William, you know, as president of the BAFTA, basically giving his initiative, his charity, his, <laughs> his Earthshot Prize, a BAFTA. So basically, William was giving himself an award. So he, you know, he gives himself an award and he gives BBC an award for covering his family. You just can't make this up. You literally just can't make this up. So, <laughs> oh, yes. Mm. 
unbelievable. It's amazing he hasn't given himself a, a, a bath just for walking behind the cup, coffin or being on a balcony or something. It's just, it's, it's funny. It is just very, very funny. But anyways, there you go. I guess for William, you know, there, there's, you know, you get their benefits for being the BAFTA president. So there you go. <laughs> Moving on. You know, it'll be very interesting next year in for the BAFTAs. I mean, I don't know if they're um, going to be, um, I don't know if they're going to be in the list for next year, but wouldn't it be interesting if Harry and Meghan docuseries, <laughs> Harry and Meghan docuseries is up for a BAFTA. Would they nominate it, do you think, for a BAFTA next year? <laughs> That would be very interesting. Very, very interesting. Moving on. Well, let's see what else I have. Oh, ah, yes, royal reporters. Um, I'm telling you, these people. I, I, I you know, you look around and you think, is there anything more vile? or any group of people or organization more vile than the British press. And I'm very, very hard pressed to find it. I mean, at this point, I feel like for them to get to gutter cesspool, they have to improve. That is how far down these people are. They need to improve to get to cesspool or maybe dregs of a cesspool they need to improve. This is how disgusting these people are. And, you know, we remember um, last year with Eamon Holmes, uh, as this Newsweek article says, uh, um, it actually doesn't mention his name, but this is Eamon Holmes. On, um, his, it says, British TV host jokes about throwing Harry and Meghan over the Queen's balcony. And that was when, you know, this whole thing was about the, you know, Harry and Meghan that the royal family are banning them from the balcony and all of that stuff for the Queen's Jubilee, which Harry and Meghan weren't interested in being a part of anyway. But, you know, there was a whole thing about it. And so um, Eamon Holmes supposedly jokes, quote unquote, jokes um, about throwing them off a balcony and it became a big thing. You know, people really went after Eamon Holmes for that. And of course, the oversight committee in, um, who was, or at least the organization who is supposed to be, you know, the oversight um, for these uh, news outlets, of course, they did nothing. They did absolutely nothing because, oh, it's just a joke. Well, Today, this ep um, this video for um, a talk TV show, it's like a royal something it's called. I don't even remember what the name of it is. Royal Beat or something like that. And so they were together doing a, a podcast, I guess, today. And Emily Andrews, thank you, Emily Andrews, um, who was part of this for, um, foursome, um, tweeted about it. Had such fun this morning with these absolute legends. Arthur Edwards, royal editor, which who is Robert Jobson, uh, Sarah Houston TV, never seen her before, and um, for royalty. Royalty is the name of the show, or the royalty. And so they were having this conversation, and part of the conversation, they, you know, they do, they came back to, will they, won't they, Harry and Meghan going to the coronation? And so they, um, they start, you know, they're talking about it and they're talking about the kids who is too young, who may not be too young and all of that stuff. And then they started basically mocking Archie, like, oh, you know, they should bring Archie out on the balcony and they're going to sing happy birthday to you because, you know, it's all about you, Archie. And, you know, so they were really just mocking uh, three, three, well, he was going to be four on May 6th, but they're mocking right now a three-year-old child and mocking what they you know what they deem would be his birthday and their birthday celebration on the balcony and then in chimes robert jobson maybe they should do something like michael jackson where they hold him over the balcony and you remember the whole hubbub if you if you may or you may not when uh michael jackson one of his kids i don't know which one of the his three kids it was was small and you know he was staying at a hotel and there were people um you know at the bottom waving at him and they had you know tons and tons of people i guess figured out where he was and one of the things he did was hold his baby over the balcony and it created this major furor because, I mean, God forbid this child falls. And so it was one of those things that's like, dude, you know. And so this is, I mean, he is, this is Robert Jobson. You, you see him with his arms. He was literally, you know, um, at 
acting out or holding out his arms of how you can hold the baby over the balcony. And it's just, it's one of those, it's the casual cruelty. And just, they just casually would talk about killing is what they're talking about, you know, or putting a child, a three-year-old child in danger in this way, you know, just like they're supposedly jokes and they're all joking and laughing about it. You know, Sarah Houston, at least, you know, she came in and said, you know, we're not going to talk about that in, 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 um, Arthur Ed was like, oh, no, they're not going to do anything like that. But nobody really stood up and say, you know what? No, this is inappropriate. This is unacceptable that you would say stuff like that about a child. You know, it was just sort of like brushed off as, oh, it was a joke. We're just not going to go there. Move on to something else. And this is the sickening, sickening thing is the casual cruelty of these people. Because, I mean, I said it before, this is what they're looking for. You know, they have been looking to Diana, Harry, and Megan, and Archie, and Lily. That's what they want. They want the death. Because if they have a death, they have stories for the next 20 years. Just like how they have been sucking on Princess Diana's dry bones since she's been dead. This is what they're looking for. And it's just, it's so sick. And it's so despicable. It is unbelievable. And nobody will do anything. No one will do anything. These reporters have been able to do this and hinted about Megan dying. About I mean, it's just, it's unreal that there is no oversight committee, no disciplinary actions, no nothing. They get to get away with this all the time. It is unbelievable how despicable this is. For them, a grown man, and this is the same Robert Jobson who, when Archie had just been born, he had written this fake book about our royal baby and tried to tell people or try, you know, try to get. He actually teamed up with this, I think, like maternity store or something like that, and acting like he is some kind of friends with Meghan and Harry. And the squad went after him. And that was when I first learned about Robert Jobson. And here is the same man who was trying to make money off of a baby that he never met, talking about holding that same little boy over a balcony, endangering his life. And this is how sickening these people are. And again, nothing is going to happen because that's how it is in the UK. But I know a lot of squaddies on Twitter right now, I was on it a few minutes ago, are all just outrage about it and so hopefully you know more and more people that that people will pick this up because it's despicable it should not go unnoticed it should not go just you know just like oh it's just another joke it, it, it's unacceptable to be putting i mean you think about all the things that they have said you know the way to heart i mean these are the same people you know, who re in December talked about dragging Megan naked through the street. I mean, not him, obviously, Jeremy Clarkson, but this is the same group of people, the same group of people, you know, and it's, it's, it's so despicable, so despicable. And so uh, my thing is like, look, I, you know, again, you know what, how I feel about Harry and Meghan going to the UK. I'm like, these people are just not worth it. <laughs> Harry and Meghan, stay home. Stay in California. <laughs> you know, one of the things I will always be grateful for is that they had the might, they, they, they had the foresight to just leave that country, to walk out of that country, because I can't imagine living among these people. And especially when knowing, you, you know, before they completely banned them from being around them, you know, these people, you saw them, you know, at, at Harry and Meghan's engagement right around them. They were given access to them, you know, to be at their engagements. And these despicable people. It's just unbelievable. Oh. Anyways, moving on. Moving on from this. I'm like, whew, just get away from the mess of Shutter Island. Gross. Utterly gross. Moving on to a more positive space. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Invictus. <laughs> thank you. So anyways, beautiful. Actually, you know what? Let me do this. 
Um, I'm going to come into a different space of mine. Let's just do a little bit of a change music. And um, yeah, let's just do a little bit of thunder. Woo! There you go. Are we going to get into some snowboarding with our Invictus mates over here? Awesome. <laughs> Wendy was just playing in the mind of Shutter Island. There you go. All right. I don't know. Maybe I, I think I'm getting a little bit better in my face. So there we go. Anyways, oh, I just, when I saw this today, this is a such a beautiful video. I am going to post a link to it so you can watch the video. If you have not been on Twitter and you haven't seen it, I want love for everybody to see it. It is so beautiful. And this is yesterday episode um i you know i had pictures of um of dean and he was just learning he it was his first day um when they posted it yesterday it was his first day learning how to snowboard and we had one of his assistant the, the lady assisting him was holding a, you know like a strap onto him and he is learning first time being on snow first time you know trying snowboarding and then they posted a video of dean today snowboarding by himself and if you know about dean you you know dean has no arms and he is snowboarding he is there in colorado snowboarding as you can see he's under like a you know a bit of a hill and he is snowboarding by himself today and it was just like oh my goodness and it's a video of him snowboarding it is just so i'm like I almost bawled. <laughs> I was just like, oh, it was just the most beautiful thing. I was just like, oh my gosh. You know, it's just, it's so inspiring. I mean, when I saw that, I'm like, wow, there's nothing I can't do. When I saw that, I am just so motivated and inspired. There he is. Yesterday, first time snowboarding, first time being on snowboard. And today, here he is doing it all by himself. You know, his tra his trainer is, um, was uh, behind him and then she was in front of him. And here he is doing his thing by himself, going down by himself. And again, Dean has no arms. And it's just like amazing. And so Invictus Nigeria, of course, Dean is part of the Invictus Nigeria team. It says, what an amazing progress and effort by Dean. Indeed, there is ability in every disability. And it is just like, oh, Invictus Endeavors, Invictus uh, snowboarding, adaptive snowboarding. And again, he is training for 2025 um, for the games in Vancouver because it's going to be um, adaptive sports. They're going to be doing uh, uh, winter sports and they're going to be doing the regular, you know, regular sports as well in Vancouver. So I look forward to see Dean on a snowboard in Vancouver. It's just, I mean, if you could do this in one day, he will be flying down that hill by the time 2025. It is just amazing. I am like, <laughs> it's just the most beautiful thing I have seen in such a long time. It just, I keep looking at the video over and over. I'm like, this is just, I mean, if you're not inspired by this, I don't know what else, I don't know what to tell you, but it is just absolutely incredible so kudos dean and the team nigeria and all i think 100 um invictus athlete athletes are in colorado training and getting to familiarizing themselves with those winter sports that they're going to do in um vancouver so kudos guys and uh let's see what else um and finally um just to remind everyone um on April 22nd at 1 p.m. is going to be our book club, Two Cents Book Club. And the book we are using, the book we are uh, going to be uh, focused on and will be focused on is Finding Me, Viola Davis's memoir. I started reading it and, ooh, that is intense. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> I was not expecting that. I had, again, no idea about her life, about her story. And it is from the first chapter, I was floored. I'm like, oh my goodness, it is just, it is really intense. And so I look forward to us uh, chatting about it. You know, um, I have the audio version. So, um, so yeah, it just, whew, I'm telling you, you see people and you, you know, you see Viola, you know, she's a, a 
Academy Award winner, Emmy winner. I mean, she's won just about everything. She's, I think she's also won um, a Tony Award for Broadway and all of that stuff. And she is amazing. And, you know, she's a star. And, and you know, she's gone through difficult things in the business. But hearing her story before she, you know, as a child and, and, you know, before any of this, you know, success in Hollywood, it's a doozy, man. It's just like, wow. So definitely, definitely, I hope we can all who are listening to me right now can read it and then we can all talk about it on the 22nd of April. So happy reading or at least intense reading, <laughs> however it is. But um, I look forward to sharing with, um, you know, us sharing with each other what we've gotten out and learned from Viola her memoir. So anyway, that's it, guys. That's it. Uh, thank you so much to our awesome moderators, George Nelly, um, Lydia, Karen M, Cookies and Cream, who um, usually are on our chats and uh, doing an amazing job helping us to keep our faith, uh, space safe. Thank you all so much um, just for all the ways that you have taken care of our channel and make sure our space is safe. Uh, thank you so much. Um, just, you know, just for being amazing. You're amazing self. And thank you to our Two Cents crew who support the channel on a monthly basis so that we can be able to pay for the things that we need to pay for to be able to do this podcast. So thank you all so much for your commitment in supporting the channel. I appreciate you. Uh, thank you to our Gold Star supporters who, um, you know, you see in the chat um, who support by a you know, donation or super chat, super thanks, super stickers, um, some donate via PayPal and Cash App. Thank you so much. Or merchandise. Uh, so thank you all so much for your support. I really, really, really appreciate it. Um, oh, actually, I always forget um, our merchandise. Um, yeah, we do have merchandise. So here, there we go. <laughs> if you're looking for, you'd like to get some merchandise, please uh, have some, you know, purchase our uh, Facts and Two Cents uh, t-shirt or sweatshirt or mug, which is my favorite thing. I always use my mug. Um, water, water, um, or actually coffee cup or bag. Uh, we have other items as well. So definitely check it out. The link is in the show notes. So I appreciate that um, so much. So thank you guys so much um, for your love and your support in every single way. Um, and I will see you next time. I'm hoping it's a live, but we will see. <laughs> again, my schedule is crazy, and that is why I am able to just do videos. But again, I am very, very, very happy to be able to do a video at least. I'm very grateful to be able to do them. So thank you, guys. Have a fantastic Friday night or Saturday whenever you see this, and I will talk to you later. Bye. Love you. <laughs> Thank you.